If you don't want to walk a straight line, I'm going to teach you how to make some loopy jewelry today with copper wire and the wig jig. Hey guys, my name's Katie, and today I'm going to teach you how to make some loopy zigzaggy jewelry with the wig jig. Let's go over the tools and supplies we need for this project. We're going to need 16 and 14 gauge copper wire, a hammer and bench block, the wig jig tool with the pegs, a nylon jaw plier, a six step bale shaping plier, a chain nose or bent chain nose plier, and a flush cutter. First, let me go over this wig jig tool. This is the Cyclops wig jig, and this is different from the other jigs in that it's circular. It's radial, so you can make all kinds of really cool wire projects. You can do snowflakes. You can do all kinds of cool, cool designs. And if you go online, the possibilities are endless. Um, they have a lot of awesome supplement patterns you can print out and put behind your wig jig. But I'm just going to show you my favorite thing to do, which is kind of a little snake pattern. I'm not going to be using these pegs, which also come with the wig jig. Um, as you can see, you can do big ones. I'm going to be using some of these smaller ones. I'm going to be using six small ones. And I already have them in place. They might be kind of hard to see, but one, two, three, four, five, six. And I basically just put them in that pattern. It's kind of like a square with two pegs on either side. And I'm going to be using the 16 gauge copper wire. If you want, you can work right off the spool of wire, which ends up saving you a lot of wire in the long run. So I'm going to do that. And first, you're going to make a loop on the end. I like to use my bale shaping plier with the smallest one, or you can use a round nose plier. Make sure that's flush cut. Grab the very end and roll it back to create a little loop. Okay, now you're going to grab your jig and put your loop on the first peg. And the next step is to wrap it around this peg. And around this peg, around this peg, around this peg, kind of pushing down as you go. And then on your last peg, you're going to go all the way around. Okay, so it looks kind of funny now, but with a few little extra steps, this will look really pretty. And the cool thing about the jig is it makes it all consistent. So you're going to be making a bunch of pieces that are exactly the same for your bracelet. You're going to trim off that extra wire right where the loop overlaps, right here. I'm actually going to cut just a little bit more. And then using my bent chain nose plier, I'm going to close that loop and make sure the top one is closed as well. Okay, so now I'm going to take my six step bail plier and just squeeze all of the round parts together kind of compressing the design. So it looks like that. And the next step is to flatten it out with my nylon jaw plier. Just squeezing it flat all over the piece.
Okay, so you can see it's gotten a little bit more flat this way. And you can go ahead and just squeeze it together a tad more if you like. And then depending on your design, I'm gonna lay it flat. I actually want my loops to be a little more centered in the piece. So I'm going to cut my loops a little bit and roll them in a little bit more if that makes sense. So like for this one, I want it to be more in the center of the whole of the whole piece. So I'm going to cut it here. And roll it back with my six step bail shaping plier, the smallest rung. I I want it more in the center because I'm making a bracelet and I want it to sit correctly. I want everything to be kind of centered off those loops. So I think that one actually looks pretty good here. And as long as I do it to every single component, it'll sit perfectly. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do to my little finding is hammer it out. And um, this, this is really soft wire, copper's usually really soft, so you want to make sure that it's not gonna lose its shape. And I'm just gonna take my chasing hammer and start to hammer. I'm gonna hammer the sides and the loops. So the way that I kinda like to do it, hold it with my left hand. And then rotate it a little bit. Rotate it some more. Didn't mean to do that, so I'm just going to pull it back out just a little. And then if it loses its shape, just kind of push it back together as you can and make sure that those loops are closed. Okay, so I have made eight of these connectors and now I'm gonna make 10 jump rings to put that together with. I'm gonna use the 16 gauge wire again in my bail shaping plier. And I'm just going to straighten that out a little bit. Flush cut the end. And depending on how big you want your jump rings to be, you can use your bail shaping plier. And I'm just going to use the second smallest one and start rolling it back into a little coil. And just keep going until you get enough to start cutting them open. Using your flush cutter, just start cutting them. And normally when you're making jump rings, you wanna make sure both sides are flush cut so that they have a seamless close. But with this, you don't have to worry about that. You just cut. Next, you're going to hammer those out. And you know, you might want to just make sure they're a little bit flat closed before you start hammering. And the way that I do it is just pretty slow. Just take your time. And 
and then use your pliers to make sure that they're closed and flush. The copper wire really just kind of melts into itself. And then you can open that up, slide on one of the components, making, you wanna make sure that they're laying all the right way before you connect them. So you wanna put on one side here, one side here. Use your other plier to close that up. And so on. Okay, so now we've connected all of those pieces and we have four jump rings left over. And I'm gonna teach you how to make a clasp. My, my, uh, my wrist is about seven and a half inches, so I made the bracelet to extend to an eight inch, but I can wear it at a seven and a half inch. It's kind of up to you how long you want your bracelet to be, but this is the type of clasp I'm gonna attach. You can, I'll show you right here. It's just a little hook. I'm gonna use one of those jump rings I made to attach it here. I'm actually gonna use two jump rings on that side to give it some movement here. And the other side is gonna be attached with one small jump ring, and then I'm gonna make two larger ones. So you can make this as long as you want. You can do like a longer chain segment of larger jump rings. It's up to you. All right, so to make this clasp, I'm gonna get the 14 gauge wire out. And I'm gonna make two jump, two jump rings using my bale shaping plier. And I'm gonna use the fourth largest rung right here flush cut that wire, even though it doesn't matter as much, and roll this back. I'm just making two of these, but as I said, you may want to make more. Cut it off the spool. All right. So now if you want with these, you can go back and flush cut them, but really, like I said, don't have to because this wire really is so soft that it just kind of just goes into itself. But it's up to you. And I am gonna go ahead and hammer these out like I did the others. Okay, so that's how you hammer those out. And then I'll show you how to make the little loop. I'm gonna use 14 gauge wire again. For the end of the hook, starting here, we're just gonna roll that back just a little bit. And then using our pliers, just kind of pinch it closed. Like that. And then using the biggest rung on our six step bail shaping plier, we're going to grab it here, roll it down, and then trim it around here. And then using the smallest cylinder, we are going to roll that back. So it just kind of looks like a question mark or an ear wire if you have ever made ear wires. So now you're just gonna hammer that out just like the other pieces. You can also use a tool. And just keep doing that until it is as hammered as you like it. Okay, so then after you've done that, you're gonna connect the clasp to your bracelet using the jump rings you've made, just like we connected the bracelet. 
slide it in that little loop. Close, and then grab another one. All right, so I've put the whole bracelet together and this is how you put it on. You just take it, wrap it around, and then the hook will go in either of those larger jump rings. So as you can see, you can kind of do it to size and it's just a really pretty copper bracelet. All right, so let's go back over the tools and supplies that we used. We used our nylon jaw plier, a flat nose plier, a flush cutter, a bale shaping plier, a bent chain nose plier, or a regular chain nose would work, a bench block, and a chasing hammer, 14 and 16 gauge bare copper wire, and the wig jig. If you need to pick up any of the supplies we used today, check out the links in the description below. What shapes would you make with your wig jig? Let us know in the comments, and while you're there, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. So, now that you know how to make a loopy wig jig bracelet, you can say, I made this.